This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it is the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, the show where we get geeky, talk tech every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time here on the Facebook Live, live.awesomecast.net, and uh, we're ready to get into it, you know, talking with a bunch of people doing, we just gather people that do interesting, techy and nerdy things around the Berg, myself, a video producer, podcaster here with Sorgatron Media, and we got a great collection of people. Of course, John Chachilla back in Studio A. It is good to be back. And you know what? It's funny because I miscounted the weeks. I should have been here last week. Yeah, I thought it was weird you did back to back. Yeah, I did back to back Studio C, and I'm like, wait a minute. That means you got a back to back Studio A now. I can, I can look into back back to back Studio A. There you go. It could be, be a fun I time. I was eyeing up that brick wall <laughs> last week to see what we could do to move it. Really? I don't know where we're if you need it help, let me know. I'll, okay. I'll help you carry it. It's not a real brick wall, guys. Don't get too <laughs> excited. It's 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 a fake big wall, but it looked amazing on the old sh- old set. That was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I guess I'm coming back next week. I might and need some help moving. Took it away. <laughs> uh, that, that other voice. Oh wait, wait, wait. Chilla, chilla. Of course, uh, gadget guru over a big bank, International Esquire. I have to say that. Oh, that's in your thank contract. You. That's in my contract. <laughs> Obviously, a brick wall is not in my contract, people. No, the brick wall is not. That is under negotiation right now. His people are talking to my people and and everything. But we have a return to the show. James Deegan joins us. First time in the studio with us. It feels very warm here. It feels very warm here. <laughs> uh, you, of course, you're a, a game developer with Mega Cat Studios. Uh, tell people what Mega, Mega Cat's about. So I'm definitely not a game developer, but Mega Cat Studios is I think your mic's off. Is, is there a switch on there? There's a switch on the right hand side. Towards you? Pull, I think it's push the I switch towards you. There you go. There you go. I think it's towards it's you. Okay. Oh. Okay. I think you're good. I think you're good. Just go ahead and pull it back into you, and you're good. That sounds. That sounds. Pull it rough. back into you. But there's James, the name of the episode. James, tell me what you do. <laughs> well, uh, I talk very closely to microphones yes. occasionally. Um, <clears throat> so, just as a, a preface with the close proximity of this microphone, again, I'm a pretty animated person, mm-hmm. and I feel like a little bit constrictive when the microphones are that close. Like, I feel like personally, potentially liable for damaging it. But here we are. <laughs> this, this, show, this show does get a little wild. So, so Mega Cat, indie game company based out of Pittsburgh. We have an international team. Our lead developer is in Arizona. Got second team lead <clears throat> all the way across the lake in Sweden. One of our team leads for art is in Scotland with Harry. Harry, I know you're not listening, but if you find this someday, we're thinking of you. <laughs> that's awesome and of course we have an awesome chat that we just recorded you guys can check it out and get a little kind of look at what they're uh doing over there a lot of great stuff and youtube videos of, of your games as well so uh we're hopefully bringing a different perspective here to the awesome cast again this week and we have you on a better connection <laughs> this was warm time. yes yeah. it's very warm it's very warm <laughs> Um, of course, please check everything out at awesomecast.com. Uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcasts, and the video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page. And join us on the, uh, the stream, as I mentioned, on the Facebook page every uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And keep an eye out for events and guests that we may have in the future. Like We just had uh, James in a little earlier to do his uh, recording for his interview and kind of catch up what's going on with Mega Cat since he's been on before. Also, thanks to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com and The405Media.com. They've been carrying us on a regular basis over there and getting us to some new years across the nation. We really do appreciate that. And, of course, a shout-out to our Patreon supporters, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. 
Coffee Club $5 level. Matt Weller over there at the other end of the state, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitters, as well as at the fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitters. Thank you so much for supporting the shows. You can too, patreon.com slash awesomecast to get goodies, extras, and, uh, and, and, and such, and all kinds of different levels for you to contribute and become part of the show if you're digging what we're doing here from week to week. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla... I have paper. You brought a map. I brought a map. <laughs> you, you, it's so Frank Mergy of you. You brought paper. So it was. So I actually got to go to Hershey Park. Nice over the holiday weekend. Mm-hmm. And when you walk in, they give you this nice big map, and they have. And then that's what I was looking up: was how many rides they have. They, they have, including the water stuff. They have sixty-six rides, a, a number of other things for food and whatnot. <clears throat> So in, in, in amongst the map, you have to look at, you have to figure out where you are in, in the world, in Hershey Park, um, what rides are near you, and then if you're like me and you have a, a small child, you have to figure out how tall your kid is, link that to what they equate to in the Hershey world, whether they're a Jolly Rancher, a Reese's, <laughs> a Twizzler, a Hershey's awesome. Kiss, a chocolate bar or a Hershey's miniature. Mm-hmm. Then you have to go back over here to the rides and figure out, can your kid ride that ride? Oh, it's not near me. So I got to find another one. And it's just this constant back and forth. They, um, they just don't have everything in a kitty land or something. Or so no, this is like no, that. In there's between. no, there's no kitty land. They just have them everywhere. There, it's just everything everywhere. It's like someone threw up rides, puked chocolate all over the park. <laughs> so it, what it, an interesting <clears throat> metaphor. And, and it's it's interesting too because they have I mean they have a zoo, they have whole sections that have different themes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what what they don't tell you when you get the map because we didn't even get a map, we had to grab it off someone else. Um, wait, wait, wait! Did you steal a map from we another didn't steal family? Steal a map? They the family offered us. Things their, are their things are map. cutthroat at Hershey Park late in the season, aren't they? <laughs> yes. I love that. They give out like fifty in the morning, and they're like, "It's up to you." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but what they, what they, as we walked around the park, I saw these signs and they were rather frequently placed pretty much at every corner in between every ride that says, Hey, have you downloaded the Hershey park free app and used our free Wi-Fi?" So they have blanketed the park, which is it's, it's, I would say it's probably three to four times the size of Kennywood. Okay. Um, they have. They've, it's not a cedar point. It's yeah, it's, but it's, it's big. Yeah, like I said, they have a zoo there, um, and a whole water park, and and all kinds of stuff. So they have blanketed the entire park in a virtual cloud of Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. um, which was actually extremely was responsive. I was amazed. And there's an app, and in the app, you can you can go through the the rides by list. You can see where you're at on the map. Um, and I included a link to the, the at least the iTunes thing, so you can see the pictures. Yeah. In there. So, so here's the app here. If you guys are on video with us, and and you guys can of course download this if you're on the iOS, or I imagine there's an Android version there's as well. An Android version. <clears throat> but you can you can see where you're at in the park. You can see what rides are near you. Um, if you go over a little bit further, um, you can get some information about the ride. You can get. It, what what the height requirements are for the ride and there's your twizzler jolly rancher yes <laughs> requirements <laughs> and then and then you can actually there's a button that says take me there mm-hmm. and it will map you throughout the park of how to get to a specific ride um it will also give you the wait times for how long the line is mm. um so like, a lot like, of things like, that a, it, like an estimate or a real time it's an, it's a, it's an estimate but it's it's pretty from pretty what good, i from what good. talking to people it's it's extremely accurate okay. and by the way i pulled up the ipad version as well because uh, you'll know, be that person that, that ha- <laughs> is carrying an ipad around an amusement park uh so you can keep in track on all the rides right yeah but it, i mean just the, there's things that obviously you're never going to get off of a piece of paper you're not going to get the map set me a route to that um to a specific ride you're not going to get ride times off the paper um i, I just found it extremely useful i wish mm-hmm. i would have known about it earlier in in the going in there mm-hmm. like i said i noticed it we were trying to get to a specific ride so i didn't pay attention to much other than how to get to the their version of the turnpike um 
but, but which extremely, is like the car, like kind of a car driving. Yeah, thing. car. You, yeah, you, it's a it's a car on rails, and you can turn a little. So just presuming right. not everybody listening and may have been been to Kennywood. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I think there's this, there's what's called the Turnpike as well because they have a bunch of Turnpike information around there. But I wish Kennywood had this app because it would be extremely useful. Along with it, I'm not sure does Disney World have this kind of stuff. Every every mm. amusement park should have this, and every mall should have this. As far as every yes, yes. maybe maybe not what what how long the the, the wait is at the cash register. In what's every the wait line for the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they did the wait line. What's what's the wait line at the at the Orange Julius yes. or the Annie Anne's? But it, even finding stores, I I'm hoping with some of the AR stuff that's coming. I'm hoping we'll see more of this, mm-hmm. um, but I, I found it extremely useful, helpful, and it it would actually it would be a selling point to return there mm-hmm. because of what you get out of their app. Isn't that because I, I know you know we just went to Kennywood for the first time this season on our season pass uh, <laughs> and uh, trying to get the most out of it, uh, and 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 it is like we're kind of sitting there it's like, well, if we come in the morning and just hit a couple of the rides before the lines get long, like you start strategizing. To get the most out of your amusement park experience, right? And listening to um, um, our friends on the Scarrows, we're talking about Disney World and and how you really need to plan, or you're not going to get the most out of that really expensive ticket down there, mm-hmm. right? So, so and I think they have like armbands and stuff that that is responsive. Yeah, <clears throat> they they have they have the stuff where that's your fast pass that gets you onto mm-hmm. the ride. That gets you, I think you can purchase when you go into the stores. You can actually use that to purchase and it bills i think either a pre-registered credit card or the room mm-hmm. or whatever credit card was used for the room your so mickey yeah. bucks or something yeah. right so yeah dollars Donald dollars <laughs> that's the way you go uh james what's your awesome thing of the week so i actually have two okay but, uh, that's fine because i'm considering two myself now i'm thinking about it i feel better already i'm mm-hmm. feeling selfish you're okay you're okay that's fine. <laughs> so the first one is uh the guys at retrotainment uh cash and culture just put out the kickstarter a few days ago for full quiet uh, a new nes game and that's a, that's a, that's on kickstarter it's on kickstarter right now anyone that has any desire to play any video game nes or otherwise buy a copy and then buy nintendo because you deserve it treat yourself full quiet a new yeah. adventure game and we got a little bit of video here for you guys on the on the visuals right now um so and again nes and pc and we we're talking a lot about retro games of course in your interview earlier so i've seen i've been in the cash and culture and seen them them they, they'd have some, like games set up and and so are they like like is somebody that's a part of that is developing something or <clears throat> all great questions i don't know how the <laughs> internal infrastructure works i know that uh they're making a strategic direction shift from retail presence to making video games this is their third kickstarter I think right now the the team members are like split between local and, <clears throat> and online, but definitely have made some very cool things with very high production value. Their video is high production. It hasn't shown like sure. barely any of the game yet. <laughs> it's it's a guy like going for a walk mostly right now. I mean, they're trying to you know really spread out those horizontal demographics. Oh yeah, looking for the plaid people, the people that like fireplaces, the rustic uh, <laughs> people that have and dogs. They're drilling you down, it, yeah, yeah. Down into, yeah, you know. Um, it's a very specific batch of Facebook AdWords they're bidding on right now. Apparently. There's like three people, and they all bought hundreds of copies. There you go. And there's some of the 8-bits. And there's a dog in it. Oh, no. It's ex- it's exactly what's in the game, actually. So, awesome. Check it out. Full day and night cycles. There's a sniper mode. This is this is kind of cool. And then, and that's that's kind of inventive, because as you know, you know, or an early part of development, you don't have a lot to show. That's for sure. Well, I think that as like gaming and Kickstarter has evolved, like nobody will kickstart something that's like too early in development. There was an era where you could put up design doc, concept art, mm-hmm. very rough, um, proof of concept, and then people would support it. But that today's are way gone. Um, I just saw we we had on um, I think last November um, guys from uh, Chikara doing a Chikara wrestling video game, and. And I just saw a notice like this week says, "Hey guys, we al- we almost have a complete one versus one game complete." 
<laughs> which is like it's been a year right and and they, they they had stuff that looked really good at the time yeah but the, i mean this is you know they were very admitted this game is you know it's one of those this game is happening it's how fast does it happen it depends on how much money you raise right definitely so you know it, it was kind of on that state so but it's still proceeding and it's no a question. 3d game as opposed to you know 2d <clears throat> right and it has to be a higher level of difficulty i'd imagine it's really interesting how all that works because there's a there's no like uh, best practice forecastable mm-hmm. end to anything. I can tell you that we've made plenty of 2D projects that are way more challenging than the 3D projects we've done. So our other awesome thing for the week is uh, at the end of this week we'll be launching our Log Jammers Kickstarter. Nice, which is a game that we've been working on for not quite a year, but something closer there from uh, concept to finish. So there's an NES iteration and there's a pc version that's pretty full featured and it follows with our mega cat brand standard for an upmake so the upmake instead of just porting it directly is completely bringing the characters to life and working to the platform's potential mm-hmm. so the pc version you can see like what zombie jack ate for dinner where the nes version you're living with some nes restrictions he has a little bit of visuals popping up in a second for you guys. Maybe there it is. Um, so it kind of say this is kind of harkened back to like the old wind jam- jammers or something like Turbo Graphics or, or Neo Geo, I think. Right? Neo Geo. I played right. that at Replay FX. Yeah, that was yeah, a- it's incredible. <clears throat> I mean, there's a there's a dozen wind jammer clones out there, and we have a few mm-hmm. things that are like very unique to this. So what's most unique is the cheerleader mode. So the, cheer- <laughs> the cheerleader mode has a few cheerleaders. <laughs> Kind of on their their floating buoys, mm-hmm. and when the axe, because you're throwing an axe here, it's much more extreme than frisbee. You can see them there. Uh, if you miss catching the axe, the cheerleader explodes, or she's <laughs> cut in half, or he. <laughs> which is also a zombie, like you no know, no gender defined, just dead zombie now. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. It, I'm glad you're working equality into the cheerleader zombie demographic here. We do what we can. <laughs> all right i i am also going to be selfish and double things up for my awesome thing of the week first of all one we're using it right now so we're kind of experimenting with it um i'm always interested in trying to figure out you know obviously how many how many platforms do i list at the beginning of the show that we're on and uh i've been very interested in in something that actually uh john lang from over at looking for group um introduced to the, this to me months ago and it's just been taking me time to to kind of get into it and and, and finally because you do have to pay for it there is a subscription to something like this um but it's called restream.io and let me make sure there's nothing important on the screen i'm not supposed to show you like private stream keys or anything so um it's pretty cool because you can set it up so one stream like we work out of wirecast and usually i just send directly to facebook live and i can just leave this up because you can just see me reacting and talking to you as we're doing this which is kind of cool um but ideally so we put the show out and we're streaming to multiple places at the same time uh facebook as we usually do and uh, we're also streaming to the youtube page for awesome cast the periscope for awesome cast uh twitch which we just have a general sorgatron media channel on twitch because we haven't really dived a lot into that and uh also secondarily we're going to the sorgatron media uh, YouTube page as well, just kind of feature some of the productions that we're doing. Um, and they're running a sale right now for um, RTMP uh, streams. They're back to school sale. And, and that's what you need to get something like Facebook. I won't get into the technology, but you need to set up a thing called RMTP servers. Um, so, so things like that. And actually, if you had multiple of those, you could actually set up things like YouTube kind of manually instead of through their, you know, hey, log in and authorize kind of situation. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool way to do that. Um, So far, it seems pretty good. There's some interesting features like they have a monitor so you can kind of see what the bandwidth has been doing on each stream as you go through here. Like I will pop up one here. And this is something that you kind of get into. Uh, You know, you know how many frames have dropped and things like that. Here's just tons of technology. Uh, for you guys that are very interested in to see, uh, you know, how your shows stream and how they look and everything like that, um, which is great because we were doing like Twitch kind of through Wirecast and we had like really bad frame rate problems. And I'm hoping something like this will kind of. Uh, but we also we were also on a really really old version of Wirecast, so I think that had something to do with it. So Restream.io, um, you know, again, kind of casting that wide net, and maybe people that live on YouTube may come across us or something like that, or or Periscope. So hello out there. Um, and like, I'm going I'm having some chat, uh, out there. 
uh, to uh, on on Periscope actually. So thank you everybody that's been popping in there. Uh, our our main chat I think is going to continue to be over on Facebook, uh, but we're going to try to figure out methods so we can keep an eye out on chats all across uh, all across our platforms here. So oh, Wheels is over on Periscope now. So uh, what's up? Let us know how that looks over there. But really, cool, because, I mean, here at Periscope, something you think of like I pull up on my phone and I do a thing, right? And now we can kind of produce something and push it to a Twitter-based platform and, you know, kind of have a hook in Twitter at that point, right? So uh, my other awesome thing, Chilla, I know I was tagging you in this Saturday morning because you, you were out of town. Yes, I was. But I was at Hershey Park. You were at Hershey <clears throat> Park. You were, you were also, I was also at one of the funnest places on earth, too. There's a new Apple store in South Hills Village. Um, they, they moved to a new location down the hall. Now I'll try to pull up the uh, our video from the other day too, um, but uh, we did get the heads up. So uh, thank you, thank you, Amanda, for letting us know uh, that uh, that that we should go visit the mall uh, last Saturday. You didn't get the email. What email? I got the I got the email from Apple. You know how much email I get? No, actually, I didn't. I don't think I did get the email from Apple. Yeah, Am I, I got on the list. Am I <clears throat> blacklisted? I don't know. Am I, I got I got an I got a, I got an email from Apple. I'm trying to remember what it was when it was. Was it Wednesday? We, there was a there was a Slack chat going on about it, and then Amanda said, "Oh, I guess the the cat's out of the I bag." Guess the or out. I guess the words out. I guess the words out. Yeah, I, and it was weird because I got an email from Apple and it said, "Come visit us at our new store location in South Hills Village," but it gave this. It just gave the the address of the mall, and I'm like, "Where did they move to? Where like it doesn't give you where more have you been? Where, where, and a reason why you need a mall a mall app." To, to map out the mall so yeah i i got an i actually got a notification via email so here's i don't know this is running really slow over here but here's a little bit of that it's about three times as big if you guys visit the south hills one it's the new style um apple store you know a lot of that wood i think the wood is from italy i was told all of those little uh chips in the in the in the in the flooring are are hand selected so there's not too many of the same color uh those little boxes you sit on that's f ferrari what leather did she say like she was really excited to tell us uh, about all the different things in here um and and the lighting is like one piece of fabric and leds there's this giant screen on the one side uh, there's the dancing robot that i broke his hand fell off and it scared me in for a moment um i thought the apple police were going to take me away uh, so it's really it's really cool um you know just a big space you don't feel like you're bumping up against everybody the genius bars are just those tables across the back now and not the the thing in you know the the uh you know the, the bar in the back that was just always too crowded whenever we went in there and i went in there a lot um but the coolest thing, uh, Chilla, I don't know if you saw in these, like, there were some demonstrations. I know we tagged you in some stuff on uh, Instagram, but there's these de uh, demonstrations set up. Like there's a home automation demonstration where they kind of have a video and you, you click the thing and it sh it's showing what's happening um, to the rooms and the lighting and the blind moving and everything like that. You know, so obviously this is your house. Um, but I live know, in the Apple store, you know, and there's the robots, the dancing robots. They got the BB-8s and the R2-D2s that can be controlled by, by, by the iPhone. So they had the R2. They had the R2. They had, <gasps> they had a couple of R2s actually. I want one. <laughs> and they also have the special edition, like drone TIE fighters and stuff that will like go up and do a battle and sync to each other. And they have them live in the store. For then, you to... Those are not live in the wow. store, but they did. They did take them out apparently at one point when they were setting up and play with them. And like you open, I think what they open, you open the box and like there's a there's a sound like there's a, a Star Wars music starts playing. I, it's it's pretty cool. Like they really like you walk. I walked in and there was like a scene from Star Wars like on this giant screen in the back. So it's a really cool setup. Um, and give me reason to want to go play in the Apple Store again. So, but I did notice something very interesting. No Macs, no Mac desktops. Like no Mac Mini or no no iMac, no any, just all laptops. Not even a Pro. I did not see a Pro. I don't think they're going to put a Pro in there. They, but they had a cylinder. They had a Pro cylinder in the old store. They did. Back they did. Cowering in the and, corner. Yeah, cowering in the corner, and they had a table of iMacs, didn't they? Yeah. I, I realize, and unless I missed them, and I can't imagine I did, but looking back to the video, I don't see anything that stuck out. The only Max I saw were the ones on the Genius Bar. With the chat? Amanda's going to correct me. Okay. 
<laughs> Good thing she's here. Uh, what's that? Yeah, she's, she's making sure I don't, I don't, I don't throw out any exclusive information. Uh, what's she saying? No mini. There was, there is a Mac Pro, Pro. somewhere, uh, but but still no iMacs. It, it seems strange to me. Unless there's a bunch of new ones coming out. You know, actually, it could be they're they're just saving space for those iMac Pros coming out at the end of the year. That. I mean, they have to put those in the store. There would be no reason not to. Right, exactly. It doesn't mean they don't sell them there. They're like suddenly, like fully immersive, sentient machines, or, so or is have, it like, their own second so, next door real world like <laughs> Mac reality TV show? So this is something I learned is that there's there's more product in the store than they have wall and floor space for. Mm-hmm. So they have to rotate that stuff mm-hmm. in and out. Because the one time I, I went in there and I'm like, I can't remember what I was looking. It was the um, Lutron, the, the wireless um, light switches and, and power boxes that I use. Mm-hmm. And I looked up online and it said they had like, uh, it was like th- there's 10 in the store. So I walked in and I walked all around all over the place and there was none to be seen. But I had seen them there last week as well. So I knew where they were on the wall or should have been. And I asked someone and they said, yeah. We have them in the back. Let me go grab you one. Interesting. And I said, actually, can you grab me two? And, and the, so we're not but, talking about like iPhones or anything like that, but you're talking about like the, the odds and end things. They the odds and end. The so I'm wondering, will they circulate some of that stuff in and out as it becomes more prevalent? Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know. Obviously, we're we're a week out from from iPhone From day. something happening. Yeah. Um, from an announcement. Now, okay. I, we, we're um, being corrected. There is one table with three iMacs and one Mac Pro. Okay. Okay. I did. It didn't stick out to me, or for some reason, but it would. I, I just felt like I would have seen it, you know. Uh, but there you go. But but it's definitely not the biggest thing because it's the mobile, it's the laptops, mm-hmm. it's the home automation. I mean, there's there's you walk in on the one side, and and there were the drones and video equipment that you can attach to your iPhone, which is, you know, that got me. Also, I'm looking at the drones, and I saw the most expensive drone was the closest one to the door. I don't know if that's a wise idea, but like the like two thousand dollar drone is just sitting there. Uh, but then again, how many thousand dollar phones are just sitting there too? And that's something that makes me nervous too, is because a, a few times I've gone in and used the the app to just buy it. Oh yeah, you're just waiting to get someone. tackled by security, and right? Yeah, you're waiting. You're, you're uh, like I'm walking out of the store. Like, is someone going to ask me about this? I still feel how do they know. I still feel weird when like I've used their they're like i'm checked out and i just walk out of the store because i didn't walk up to a register Mm -hmm. you know it still feels odd to me but i I guess that's one of those things that they're they're still kind of uh re re re-educating us on i guess a little bit so anyways hey let's give a shout out to our good friends at slice on broadway voted best pizza in pittsburgh by the way um and i think they're up for it again with city papers uh best of this year um they're of course supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh down here in, up the street on broadway avenue here in the beachview neighborhood as well as main street down in carnegie pa and pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates um supporting the show thank you so much to those guys uh love uh love all the all the love that everybody's been giving them uh fans of the show and the like the people that say uh the awesome cast sent me and everything um they love, love going in and chat with them every week so uh support the guys that support us and feed our guests here as they come in and we're getting a crowd we didn't mention like you you drew a crowd like 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 you have an audience member you have a fan <laughs> it's kind of like a manager it's kind of like a manager okay all right uh shane in your face uh, a friend of friend of the show from wrestling mayhem show is hanging out with us uh, uh what's up shane Oh, that's not on. Is it, is it switched on, Miss? Towards you. There, there you is. go. Hey. Oh, there we go. You have to eat the microphone. He'll tell you. Like, hello. He's off camera. <laughs> he's the floaty. He's the floaty voice. Of course, local pro wrestler, MMA. Uh, I want to say superstar. <laughs> uh, I'll set up a fighter. <laughs> the fighter. The fighter. Don't don't mess with him. He if he's if he, if he's going for that iPhone, uh, he's gonna win. Uh, if there if 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 it goes down at the Apple Store. Uh, but um, but you no, know, thanks for joining us. I, I don't I don't know how techy you are. Not very techy. However, I would go after those Tie Fighters. There you go. I saw you light up I'm when I said it. the Tie Fighters. I'm in. Have you been to the uh, Apple Store in like New York? Yeah, I've been to a couple of them. There's like, like the one 24 hour one in Manhattan that's mm. like Apple Disney. <laughs> oh yes. <Right. laughs> 
Like I was talking, I had to buy a 6s pretty recently. Whenever my six like died when I was when I was there, <clears throat> like about three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and uh, the genius who was helping me was like, he's like, yeah, man, it's pretty crazy around 3 a.m. He's like, you either find like the most like at it successful, ready driven people or like the craziest people that are trying to barter like pistachio shells for phones. <laughs> <laughs> is that like the fifth? A- was it the one with the cube or is it like, which one did you end up at? Yeah. Fifth Avenue. The fifth Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's where I was in New York city visiting a friend. My phone exploded because New York it, does it, that basically did that. And I was like, Oh God, I need a phone <laughs> to get home. Right. And, yeah, for and, sure. and when the fifth store, I'm like, please help me. I swear. <laughs> it was like, you know, they pump like oxygen in Vegas. They pump like anti phone air in New York. I've had like, <laughs> out of like 20 trips, I'm down like 32 phones or something crazy. San like, Diego. I've experienced the Vegas air before. It's so crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 San Diego, my phone like needed to re- reset from just, scratch. Just gave up. Yeah. And I'm literally living on Airbnb and Lyft. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I pretty much live on my phone. I traveled to. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to somebody and it went white screen with like no sign of giving up. I'm like, okay. That's scary. Good, uh, That's scary. Experience a 24 hour Apple store now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To that point, like I try to, like I have an old, like five, five ass. I'm like, I'm just going to pack this just to be safe. Just in know? case. I like, always you, pack yeah. a spare phone. Just, yeah. just in you, case. You pack a spare everything. Yeah. <laughs> no. Between you and Krause, we were talking with Krause. He was talking about how he's always carrying like his laptop and an iPad and this and this and this. And I know, I know some of that, you know, obviously for work, but it's just like, you have to have all you know those things that and i have an odd fear of someone's like breaking into the hotel room and stealing my stuff or Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. that kind of thing and then you can't you go if you're at the beach there's not even an apple store around you yeah but if you don't have something to take in to say hey this is broken and try to get something to replace it then you're just buying completely outright so i always keep a, a spare just just for emergency purposes i can always go get a new sim real real quick and easy mm-hmm. um getting the whole phone can be rather difficult depending on where you're going i kind of have a split thing where it's like okay i left this thing in the in the in the in the um in the uh hotel room i left this in the car i have this on me while i'm out on the job you know so there's like a piece of technology like a break cum trail you know <laughs> if like w- like you have multiple points of failure right when you're out Yes, yeah. you, you kind of need to. Like, I came with this one thing, and it's gone, and now I'm done. You know, you, you have that. Like, what do you do when you're in like Thailand, and nothing works? You know, and you're not. I don't. I, okay, there's no Apple Store, but man, can you get cell phones? <laughs> Let me just put. The, yeah, I you mean, can in get some, pe- in some countries. I think we've talked about it. You can piece together your own phone off the street. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and 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 this was very close to it. And I was at the mall, and there was just like cell phone like. If you want to get anything sketchy related to a cell phone, it's just in the mall in this just massive kiosks that they have on this one floor. And it's just like, this is weird, you know. Um, but anyways, other than that. All right, let's get to... I want to I want to try to see if I can pull this up here. Everybody was uh, really going crazy on the Where's Waldo 3D, which it was one of the 360 Facebook picture kind of things. That was kind of fun. Also, a lot of weird stuff. They've, they've kind of updated Waldo a little bit, I think. Um, like there was a random naked guy hanging out in this photo. Uh, so I think Riz had shared this originally. Is that right, Missy? Um, and and it's a, I just saw everybody commenting. So um, this is part of just the 360 photos uh, page, which I imagine is just like a Facebook page. They got, oh, powered by just Pano, and they have their own app on the android in the iphone uh so yeah a little a little fun 360 pano where's waldo thing uh if you're a fan of the old books i have not found waldo yet but oh wait is you haven't a, found him i don't know i didn't really spend a lot of time with it yeah but uh everybody kept posting pictures of the weird stuff they were finding finding in here did they change what Waldo looked like? No, no, like it's it's the same yeah. glasses Waldo. He's like aged. I desperately. found. I think you no passed him. I found <laughs> naked guy. I found naked guy though. Where is naked guy? Yeah, and if you scroll, if you look down at the floor, it's like someone on a beach chair. Oh, jeez, sitting in the middle of the crowd. Well, hello. Sorry, I'm standing on you. Um, there you go. Uh, you can check that out. The uh, 360 or photos in 360 on Facebook as well. So um also on here uh th- this was a cool story and uh dan greenwald from comic book pit 
another podcast on our on our network here at Sorgatron Media, um, posted a picture of this a little bit ago. And I and I was uh, out lift driving a couple of days ago, and I found this. It is a giant mur- mural of Magneto. That's up in I don't know Lawrenceville, um, and and what's awesome is this is a scrap facility. That's awesome. That's great. So apparently the artist is an article from uh, theincline.com, a great local uh, publication doing some fun articles. Um, it's actually a graffiti cover up that they did, and it's just this giant thing that goes uh, goes across the fence and everything. Um, it, it really could chat, and I think this is the original building, maybe. Yeah, I think that's it there. Um, or what? No, these are his other pieces, actually. There's a, a cool eagle one that he did. And a nice kind of a, a flower and a woman's face uh, uh, one as well. I think I might have come across that as well. Um, I guess he listens to music while he's doing it. So that's why there's really interesting kind of style to everything. But uh, it's just kind of uh, sticking out a bit. And there's a, there's a couple of interesting graffiti things going on around Pittsburgh uh, to cover up a lot of these old spaces. So... Um, but go check that out. Thanks that uh, the article I found from uh, our friend Facade, another wrestling connection from this show. Um, so uh, props to him for uh, sharing that as well. He is also interested in the graffiti. So it kind of fits. Uh, Chillo, uh, anything you want to touch on for this week? Do, 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 do. Let me go into the awesome doc to find some awesome stuff. <laughs> um, did you see? So did you see the Apple Watch controversy? And I think it's over the Boston Red Sox. Um, I guess they've gotten caught cheating using the Apple Watch to steal signs. So they have people What? They have people watching like the 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 signs that the catcher's giving to the pitcher. Mm-hmm. And then if they can figure out what the signs are, they actually ping that out to the Apple Watches that people are wearing to tell them what kind of pitch is coming. Um I don't think they can get it quick enough to obviously affect the 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 person at bat, mm. but it definitely, it's definitely helpful to, to, to others. So I found it, I found it interesting and it makes me wonder like how many other people are cheating at tests or cheating at something else by using some kind of wearable device that's connected. I guess they ran into this problem before. Um, and when asked the person at question said the device wasn't connected to his iPhone at the time and they were able to prove that. But it's just interesting as to how you can use a wearable to be able to cheat with two-way communication. I'm guessing, and I was thinking about it, you know, with the new ability to kind of sketch out questions and sketch out things on your watch to then iMessage to someone else, you could carry on full-blown conversations, send pictures back and forth. It could become an interesting tool. Like I remember, I remember the the having the calculator watch in 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 grade school, and they would have to like make sure you don't use it on the test, and they just kind of trusted me. You know, now how much could you? I mean, you could Google something on your watch. And I I remember we used to because we had the graphing calculators for for trig and different things. People would people if if people would actually go and take the test, and for people that hadn't take the, taken the test yet, they would actually type out all the test questions into the calculator so then you could walk out of the oh, class and you had the entire test okay you could then give to like the next class mm-hmm. or or whatnot so yeah it, people will find a way i guess is the, is the point but i, I thought it was interesting that that's that, that hitting the wearables I'm, I'm glad somebody had had a better use for that because all that my class ever did was type out boobs <laughs> so it shows you where we were we actually had someone that found classic because because you used to Texas Instruments created a serial connector for your PC mm-hmm. that you could actually upload and download via a headphone jack in the bottom of the, the graphing calculator. People had someone had Duck Hunt that they found. Like people reprogrammed um, Spy Hunter. Wow! So there was all kinds of. There's like um, a still very active like homebrew community for a calculator games. Yeah, really? yeah. So so there you go. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'm sure they're still out there. That's awesome. All right. Uh, so so I thought this one was interesting. I'm always interested. Actually, I'm going to switch what I'm going to talk about here because I have to talk about this. Um, so flash mobs still happen from time to time, right? I mean, 
I remember like like the old the dancing ones. There's a lot of videos on YouTube for that, you know. Um, there was I filmed at some point they did some kind of musical flash mob down at uh at the county courthouse and I I'll ask them, it was it was like eight years ago, so I can't remember what it was for. What you, have you done a flash mob? Has uh, Shane done a Trump flash mob? I don't want to spoil the end of the video. No, no. <laughs> but uh, I, I found this one. It, it just kind of going. I forget where it got shared. But there was on September first. There was screaming like Goku in front of the Washington Square Arch, uh, and there is a video of just a bunch of people screaming like Goku, turning into a uh, Super Saiyan. In front of the Washington Arch. It's over 9,000. It's over 9,000. <laughs> I love that he described it as the turning into Super Saiyan. Like he's about to show us like straight up anime, real yeah. life 3D iterations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So like there, there's just a couple of uh, looks like Snapchats or uh, something of just people standing around with their arms outstretched. And uh, I don't have the audio on here, but they're just just screaming. There's a, there's a better angle on this here at a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just have a big appreciation for that um so so thanks uh, wherever that came from there on the internet um but anyways now the one i was going to get into a little little more actually this is more along in your in your lines um have you been keeping up on uh, uh professional gamers these days it's pretty crazy it's getting crazy yeah how about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars salary for an overwatch player <laughs> That's real crazy. That's insane. <clears throat> I think one of my favorite things that we're kind of watching right now <clears throat> because we're working on a, a tool for it is it's kind of like the equivalent of the combine for professional gaming. Mm -hmm. So like training core competencies, something with the, the track and field of playing professional video games. And it, there's some incredible research taking mm. place. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's um, way beyond like what I would have ever imagined when I was playing like Sonic 1. Right, you know, <laughs> it's like so crazy, but yeah, the professional gaming stuff is very interesting. To watch you figure everyone wants to get into some kind of uh, esports something capacity right now, just because they all know it's it's growing and scaling so incredibly quickly, and the uh, that generational trend where the line is like it's gonna exponentially grow over the next decade here. I see. This isn't the kind of thing where I'm sitting at home and I'm playing Call of Duty, realize I'm kind of good at Call of Duty, and then become a professional gamer like it's it's not like the entry there's still a great barrier to entry to something like this to become a pro i'm getting money for this gamer yeah i would want to be like color commentary or like a manager like a hype man for a professional gamer <laughs> like i would definitely do that like uh like frank easily like top three percent at duck game I i've watched multiple duck game groups like go down in shame from frank drop dropping his bill in the building you know but it's a uh, it's crazy to, to watch someone who like generally has like mastery over a game. Mm -hmm. Like one of my childhood friends growing up, uh, like Bill Urbanic, mm -hmm. he can play Mega Man X the first couple levels with his eyes legitimately closed, blindfolded. Just super crazy, right? Like it's like the, the least effective party trick because you like get people <laughs> hyped about it mm -hmm. and everyone sits around in silence, always blindfolded to warm up for 30 minutes. Right? <laughs> you know? But, uh, but it, it's like seriously nuts to think about, <clears throat> you know, um, pure KPI metric standpoint, look at RTS as a genre and look at the people that play competitively and then the people that play casually that are like capable and competent. And it's still like enormous world of difference. It's like, uh, it's like having <clears throat> the random IGA, like checkout line, whoever goes through express every three wrestlers has a wrestle Shane. They're, they're just like, it's just totally just like different worlds. Right. I feel bad yeah. for them. Yeah. I, I feel bad for them too. <laughs> All they want to do is eat some chicken. They're like I was here for the tickle <laughs> fight. What's going on? <laughs> Why am I getting punched? Next, you in know, the face? I was asleep. Double coupon. Like. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. I, I, you know, and I can see that. You know, it, it's 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 becoming a big thing. It's um, and I, I have not come across this, but like it's huge. It's coming on yeah. TV. Like ESPN's carrying stuff like this. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. NBA is is investing in this kind of thing. Um, and it's going to get bigger. I love, I love the sub headline on this, by the way, by uh, in Gadget. Uh, the 17 year old still needed his mom to sign off on the deal. <laughs> just, just want to point that out there, guys. What so. would happen if she would have said no? <laughs> yeah. Would she? It's like would she? Actors. Come like on. Oh yeah, yeah. Tunnel 25. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mom's the manager. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Hi, the, baby, you can play those video. Dude, games. my mom is pro video games. 
I still remember like uh, when I first got that Sega Genesis, the, the Sears mm-hmm. Roebuck technician, just like actively trying to explain to her why it couldn't be hooked up with like the broken pieces that attached to our TV. <laughs> and she just used a proponent of it, you know? When he yeah. left that day, there was a blue hedgehog. Yeah, however, <laughs> she was excellent at keeping you carved up for games. <laughs> no question about that. Yeah. That's true. I guess she was looking looking ahead. She was. It would have been brain food. She was of... ahead of her time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, there you go. I mean, I think I think his parents grew up. Yeah. They're our age, right? right. Grew, sure. grew up on Sonic and Mario. I'm like, wait, my kid. Instead of like you know yeah, investing, instead of investing in like football that I don't care about, I just need to invest in video games and and, and have him spend a bunch of time on that. Him or him or her, and and yeah, that right. is that is a potential scholarship for college. Yeah. Okay. My kid doesn't have to have brain trauma. It uh, depends on what games he's playing, but uh, you know, but but still, <laughs> hey, right? On the brain trauma thing. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking football. Okay. <laughs> Punches hurt too. Punches hurt too. Yes, but I don't think they. Is there active MMA in high schools yet? I don't think so. There is now. There is now. There's actually kids classes. They start as early as five. With the head punching. Head punching. Jeez. I think it's wonderful. You gotta learn them early. So I think they start early, but use VR. We have that game. You know, like, uh, I, I'm sure that between now and, like, one generation of VR, let's say six years, five years, yeah, uh, this is the time for sure where everything is uh, very quickly fail fast or push up. Like, the quality standard of current, like, VR games, now that they've been actively sold on a few platforms the last two years, is, like, dramatically changed. All the, the training games and the active augmented reality opportunities. I so know that the sports fights. training stuff's happening. Oh, big time. It takes zero trauma? <laughs> well... Maybe emotionally. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have a comment from Steve in the chat room. Uh, it says, uh, uh, back to the, the, the baseball story uh, with the Apple Watch. He says, being a, a Red Sox fan, there was a, a friend of an equipment guy that was on the bench that picked up on the signs. He uh, uh, missed the, messaged them to him in the dugout. I, I, he then relayed the pitch signals uh, to the batter to know if a curveball and the other pitch was uh, and such was coming. So there's a little bit of the hows and whys for you. Did, did you read the bottom of that? It, <clears throat> so they, they signed him for 150000 Okay, year. we're back to the gamer. Sorry, okay. yeah. Because, I mean, 150000 is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But then he gets, that includes health insurance, retirement savings plan, Jeez. a share of at least 50% of all bonuses from tournaments and events that split amongst the team. A bonus pool of three point five million in the first season, and at least one million for that for the for the year's champions. So, I mean, this is the, it, I mean, there's a lot of cash mm-hmm. on the table. Mm-hmm. And that would mean somebody else is making much, much more on top of that. Um, so, 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 so I'm watching Ballers with the Rock right now. Yeah, and you know, there's always British. that, like, you know, the football players and. That? You know, you're not into that? You're I binge watched, watched it. You binge watched it. You're going to appreciate this. My wife and I have been referring to Ricky Jarrett as Tan Shane. He does look like a Tan Shane. <laughs> it's like too <laughs> real. Dude. The high top, I'm in. But it, you know, it, I modeled my beard after Ricky Jarrett. <laughs> on my tablet at home, I have a nose application with like six different things that are Shane like. I was going to wait till it hit 100 and just deliver it. Shane, you got to get in the shot over here so we can so you can show the beard off real quick. Just just so just be any Ballers fans out there that know, just kind of creep in there, creep in there. Give, give me some beard. Dude. Just hang out there for a minute. You can hang out for the rest of the show. That's all right. Finally. We're not going to hear you, but you can hang out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what if we share the microphone? <laughs> no, there you go. There you go. You're your friends. You're good friends. But uh but no, like where's the Ballers of like the video game generation? Like the kids that like, you know, he's 17 years old and has a contract for 150 million dollars. What happens when he's 25 and we've moved on to the next game he's not good at? The party house sounds way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. What is that kid's party house going to look like, just right? just tons of drones. Oh, drones and... Drones, TIE fighters. Strategically placed cameras, augmented friends. Yeah, there you go. There are not even any prostitutes at With that point. Series. As close as it's going to be to like my office in two years. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, James, thanks for joining us. Uh, where can everybody check things out? Mega Cat Studios on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere ever. Uh, definitely MegacatStudios.com. Later this week, we'll be putting up log jammers for Kickstarter. And if you like video games, zombies, lumberjacks, or anything ever, definitely check it out. There you go. Shane, since you're Garrett, get on the mic. Share the mic. Love the mic. 
Where, 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 where can people find Mark out what you're another. into? There you go. You can follow me across all platforms at Shane in your face. Everywhere. And I'm coming to a wrestling ring near you. There you go. Who? Who? <laughs> and John Chichilla is chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitters, John Chill on the Facebook. There you go. And of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, a lot of great podcasts going on in the pro wrestling world, of course. Shane has some interviews and some appearance on that stuff as well. And uh, and of course, our friends in, in, in comic books and, and Scarehouse and everything else going on. SorgatronMedia.com. And of course, Sorg- our awesomecast.com for everything awesome and uh, tech related. And uh, thank you, everybody that's joined us in the chat room. Anybody that's joined us on these other streams we've been trying with Restream.io uh, to see how that works. If you're new on any of those, let us know in the chat room or let us know afterwards. And, uh, and uh, we'd like to see if uh, people are kind of popping in on those uh, new platforms. Thank you to our awesome audience. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.